Hello everyone! In 2006, John Hope Bryant, Pekka Himan and myself started Global Dignity. With the help of our more than 30 country chairs and organizational partners, youth across the world have been able to participate in Dignity Days. This is our Teaching Tools video, a step-by-step -step guide on how to perform a Dignity Day. Dignity! It starts from small people, person to person, until it to the whole world. You should help each other! A Dignity Day is an ethics course, an anti-bullying exercise and a motivational seminar for young people in a two-hour package. To perform Dignity Days we need volunteers, main facilitators who are in charge of coordinating the other facilitators and coordinating with the school, and regular facilitators who go into the classroom and facilitate there. If you need more in-depth information, please look at our teaching tools uh, at our website. And it might also be a good idea to bring a copy of the teaching tools with you in the classroom. The first thing you do if you volunteer as a facilitator for a Dignity Day is to read and agree with the five Dignity Principles. They are as follows. 1. Every human being has the right to lead a dignified life. 2. A dignified life means an opportunity to fulfill one's potential, which is based on having a human level of healthcare, education, income and security. 3. Dignity means having the freedom to make decisions on one's life and to be met with respect for this right. 4. Dignity should be the basic guiding principle for all actions. Five. Ultimately, our own dignity is interdependent with the dignity of others. When Dignity Day finally has arrived, the first thing that happens is that everyone gets together in the plenary hall. Here, the school official, the principal, will Welcome everyone and introduce the Global Dignity team that is visiting the school. This will usually take three minutes and then the main facilitator is introduced. She or he will then take the stage and tell a little bit, a brief history about Global Dignity, introduce the concept and then uh, go through the proceedings of the day. First 20 minutes in the plenary, then uh, 50 minutes in the classrooms and then half an hour back at the plenary. The next important thing is to remember and to uh, be inspirational and say something that will fire up the kids a little bit. I want you to know that I believe in you even though I have never met you personally. Thank you. <laughs> if I don't like me, I can't like you. If I don't feel good about me, I'm not gonna feel good about if I don't respect me, I'll never respect. If I don't feel good about me, I'll never feel good about. And here's the biggest one. If I don't have a purpose in my life, I'm going to make your life a living hell. Because whatever goes around. So it all starts with you. Everything in your life starts with you. I'm just, it's, it's just amazing to me when I look around, I look at you, and I look around the school. The absolute prosperity that I see around here. You know, and, and many of you might be thinking about money. But you know, prosperity is about so much more than money. It's about your state of mind, your state of being, the way that you think, and the way that you approach life. That you are all very talented people. The question is that how will you use your full potential in ways that uh, increase also the dignity of others. Uh, a good way to do is to tell your own personal story, your dignity story. A dignity story is either a story about you helping someone else, someone else doing something good for you, or you doing something good for yourself that will strengthen your own platform. Um, to tell you a little bit about me and as you have all been so open and revealing about yourselves, um, I run an organisation in the UK called Just For Kids Law and we represent children who get in trouble, so children who are in prison. And um, what we hope to do is we can't always change the outcome, but we can change the experience. 
so we can bring dignity to those children who are in prison and who are on trial. And my background to this was from in the United States where I represented people who are facing the death penalty, children who are facing the death penalty. And I represented a 17-year-old boy who was sentenced to death in Louisiana, and he was innocent. Um, and I went to visit him in the prison cell, and he was very clear, and he said to me, Shawnee, don't worry about me, the truth is going to set me free. And five years later, I had the privilege of going to his sister's wedding in New Orleans. He was free, and we got to walk down the aisle of the church together. So I hope that the dignity that he showed is something we can spread across the world. So thank you very much. So these are the stories that we're seeking to get the students to tell later on. So a good way to start is to tell your own story, um, be personal, uh, not too private, but personal, uh, and tell something that you have experienced, something that has lifted you and brought you in the right direction. After the main facilitator is done with the first introductory remarks, um, there's one thing that uh, we have good experience with, uh, which is to ask one of the students to prepare a dignity story and share that with their peers uh, at this point in the program. Remember to support the student that just tell their story. It's very courageous to stand up there and, and do that. Uh, so hopefully everyone will be uh, clapping and applauding very loudly and uh, get the energy up in the room. Uh, that's kind of important. Uh, then at the end, uh, if you like, you can show the promotional video. Um, the Global Dignity promotional video. That will take a few minutes um, and then wrap up the um, introductory session uh, and go into the classrooms. Maybe by saying that you're looking forward to uh, seeing everyone back after an hour um, because then they will share their stories and after all that's why I've, we've come to the school to hear the students' stories. So when you get to the classroom, uh, it might be a good idea to uh, go around and say hello, shake everyone's hand um, and ask a little bit about the class, what uh, they're doing, if they have a, a special uh, theme or direction in their studies and also uh, introduce yourself. Uh, say a little bit about your background and maybe tell your own dignity story as an introduction. Uh, then uh, the first exercise is to get all the students into small groups. So it's actually good if they're in groups of uh, about four, could also be three, and um, you ask them to come up with words, something they associate with dignity. So dignity is a big word, represents a lot of uh, value. I usually ask in the beginning, do you think dignity is a difficult or uh, an easily accessible term? Uh, and Always, uh, the kids say it's, it's more difficult, it's kind of hard to get a grasp on. Um, and then uh, I say that yes, uh, the exercise we're now doing uh, will help us all um, understand a bit more uh, what dignity means, we'll help each other. So everyone goes into those smaller groups uh, and in a group um, uh, they write down, one of them writes down all the words and associations they come up with and it can be respect, uh, uh, you know, compassion, um, gender equality, what have you. This bulk, it's supposed to take 15 minutes. So after around five minutes, you interrupt the kids and uh, ask them to come up with the words. During that time, you should have talked to the teacher and maybe asked the teacher whether he or she could help you out and write down the uh, kids' words on the blackboard with dignity in the middle and then you just write all the other words around. Um, and uh, maybe go around to the different groups, various groups, and talk to them, encourage them a little bit. Sometimes it's difficult to come up with words, uh, but that's usually because the kids are trying too hard and trying to be uh, too clever, because uh, it's really just to go with your gut feeling. There's no right answer here. It's just to come up with, with all the words that pops into your head. We're not looking for the dictionary's version of what dignity is. There's no uh, wrong answer, so it's just to sort of uh, get a lot of different ideas up on the board. If you want a bit more time to uh, warm up uh, the students in your classroom, uh, one good trick could be to go through the five dignity principles and just ask the kids 
Okay, so uh, dignity principle number one. Uh, which words would you say uh, fit into dignity principle number one? Or you could go the other way and, and point at the word and say, which uh, dignity principle do you think respect fits with? Uh, and then you just put the number of, um, of the dignity principle that uh, the kids um, answer um, beside the word. And then you keep going like that until uh, all the dignity principles have at least one word uh, each on the blackboard. And then you can ask the class, so did you, um, do you have a clearer understanding of what dignity is now uh, than before the exercise? And hopefully they'll answer yes, and so far they, they always have. The next bulk is important. This is where the students get to tell their dignity stories. So they continue to sit in their small groups of four, and uh, this time they will tell dignity stories to each other. Uh, they don't write them down, they just tell their stories, um, and the stories can be big or they can be small. So it's important to tell the, the students that um, whatever story they have, uh, it's, it's good enough, uh, and then uh, they tell their stories to each other for about seven, eight minutes. So now you have gone around together with the teacher in the different groups and encouraged the students to tell their stories and maybe listen to a few of them. Um, and then after maybe seven, eight minutes, you break off and it's time for the students to uh, tell their stories to the entire class. Um, and you do that group by group. I have a friend, I'm just gonna do this freehand. I have a friend who lives in a pretty rough place when it comes to acceptance. But she doesn't let that get her down. She is homosexual and has a pretty tough time. But she has friends who stand by her. So remember when the students are telling their stories, group by group, uh, to clap and uh, support them and create um, a good atmosphere uh, in the classroom. Uh, and don't necessarily analyze the stories uh, in between. Uh, just let one student uh, tell after the other. That's usually what works the best. It's great if you can talk to the teacher and ask for help to pick out the right dignity story or stories um, when uh, they share them to the class. Uh, after all this, the teacher knows the students much better than the facilitator, uh, so it's important with the teacher's input on which uh, stories and which students uh, should tell their stories in the plenary afterwards. We're aiming at between 15 and 20 stories for the plenary, uh, so depending on the amount of classes, um, there will be one or two stories probably from, from each classroom. The last exercise you do in the classroom is individual. Each uh, student gets a paper and a pencil or a pen and writes a letter. They're going to write two things. One, what they are for. It's not allowed to be against, they have to be for something. Uh, so it could be um, a new skateboard ramp at school, or it could be world peace, it could be uh, small or big, um, but something that they are for. Second is something they want to do the next year to strengthen someone else's dignity. Um, it can be helping your sister with uh, homework or it can be um, becoming a member of the Red Cross, Red Crescent and going around uh, spreading that message or raising money or, or what have you. Uh, so two things, they, they can be connected if you want them to, but they don't have to. Um, so, what you are for, and number two, what you want to do the next year to strengthen someone else's dignity. While the students now have been working on the letters, uh, it's quiet time because this is an individual exercise. You speak with the teacher about which stories you want to pick out for the plenary session afterwards. When you agree, you go to that one student or the two students and ask them personally whether they would like to tell their story afterwards. Usually it's, it helps to encourage them to say that this was an important story. I think that uh, it would be great, um, uh, a great benefit to your peers if they could hear uh, them tell the story in the plenary afterwards. Uh, and most students say yes uh, when you put it forward that way. Now you ask the students to fold their paper and write their own name on the letter. Then you use the box that the teacher has and all the students put their uh, letters in the box. Uh, and the teacher will keep the letters for one year and then hand them back out to the students. So this is a letter to themselves one year into the future. 
So then they can see what they are for, uh, what they were for, and what they wanted to do the next year to increase someone else's dignity. After that, you wrap up the classroom. Um, you tell the students that it was great to get to know them a little bit and um, wish them good luck for uh, the future. If you have some extra time, you can ask some of the students uh, if there are anyone that would like to share what they're for or what they want to do the next year. Um, and then you proceed back to the General Assembly. So this is the high point of the day. We all get back to the um, plenary and the students tell their stories. So the first thing you do is to ask them whether it was a positive experience in the classrooms. Um, they will all say yes. And then you ask the students that, that have been asked to tell a story to line up by the stage. And then you just let them tell their story one after the other. They say their name and then be brief, uh, one to two minutes per story. Um, and there you go. Uh, no um, analyzing between the stories, just let one story follow the other uh, and support and clap each for each and every one of them. Now you've heard some amazing inspiring stories from the young people and you as the main facilitator will now wrap up the session. Usually I say that it takes great courage to tell these stories in front of all the other people in the room. Uh, so to give all the people that have told their dignity stories another big hand is usually a good idea. Uh, and it is actually really impressive. Uh, so it creates a lot of uh, good energy to do that. Uh, at the end, when I wrap up, I usually say something uh, about that each and every one, obviously in the room, have hundreds of stories. We've only heard a few examples. Um, and that they're all leaders uh, and they should think about uh, how they want to use that leadership. What footprint do they want to leave in the world? Um, and then you thank the school again and uh, everyone participating, maybe the uh, facilitating team. Um, and that wraps up the session and the um, school um, official will usually say thank you after that. Uh, and that ends uh, the ding today. And hopefully you have uh, changed uh, the lives and the outlooks of hundreds of uh, young people uh, throughout those two hours. So on behalf of the entire Global Dignity team, all the country chairs, all the organizational partners, uh, good luck with your session. We're looking forward to hearing back from you.